Right then, good afternoon, folks, and just another update from us at the beginning of US trading this afternoon on Wednesday, the 21st of June. Uh, we'll stuck into the headlines, we'll have a flick across the market, see what's up, see what's down, try to see if we can find some more pinpoint any direction into this US session this afternoon, which may be slightly tricky. But I think the main headline, kind of off the back of, or since this morning's video, you see China lashes back as Biden labels you a dictator, which was probably slightly unnecessary um, after efforts from both sides to lower tensions between them to come out and name him a dictator is probably slightly unnecessary, to be perfectly honest with you. Um, China has hit back at that over the course of this morning does that result in any meaningful price action no if that was to continue and you know relations were to sour drastically off the back of it you know maybe they look at some sanctions and stuff that would be a situation when 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 that would be be a consideration for marcus but just a little a war of words where this, he says this he says that nothing worth paying attention to certainly in my point of view anyway but slightly unexpected and i think pretty unnecessary from joe biden to label label him a dictator whether you believe he is or, it, or whether you believe he is or he isn't clearly they're not going to take kindly to that i think it's a bit of a stupid comment but i guess he said it and we'll have to see how that plays out going forward. But UK inflation, right? Sterling has sold off at the back of UK infl inflation, which we did predict earlier on, albeit maybe we didn't predict it happening today. I, I, you know, I, I thought you might, might get a bit of upside into the Bank of England tomorrow with potential for a 50 basis point hike, but that has not materialized. It lasted, I mean, a ping straight higher and it's just sold off ever since. So we'll have a look at a chart. We'll have a look at cable once we get around to it now in a minute. But you know, really, <clears throat> really, that is not a good situation for the Bank of England to to to, to be in. Albeit they've slightly put themselves in that but in, in that situation, but you know, with, with mortgage rates rising for 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 the whole country, that increases people's costs um, or outgoings every single month. Also, then, with the cost of living crisis, with inflation remaining where it is, remaining as elevated as it is. That is then also a situation where people's day-to-day -day cost of living then continue to rise. So if inflation continues to rise, interest rates continue to rise, but people's mortgage payments and their daily outgoings just increase. You know, food costs, energy costs, generally every time you leave the house, it just costs more these days. So, you know, if that's, that is a situation that, that is not good for the UK economy. If the UK economy, um, or, you know, for people, if, you know, if interest rates keep rising, mortgage rates keep rising, cost of living keeps, keeps rising, well, that's your cost of living on two different fronts continuing to rise, which is basically all the, mon the majority of money that you spend. So, you know, what the Bank of England do is a little bit tricky. I mean, do they have to cave at some point and just be like, here, we can't get both under control. There's no point, you know, they're just going to stop hiking interest rates and hope that inflation cools down like they have predicted in the back end of this year, or are they just going to keep hiking, further hiking, people's cost of living continues to rise and you just, you doubly, doubly screw people on, 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 on either side of things. So I don't really know what the solution is personally. No. Do they just stop interest rate hikes to stop mortgage rates going up, even cut interest rates to stop mortgage rates going up and um, or to reduce mortgage rates, should I say, and just hope that inflation cools down over the back of the year? I mean, it's a bit of a mess. It's not a bit of a mess. It's a complete mess. But that's the situation that these central banks have put them in with the unprecedented amount of stimulus they pumped into markets post-COVID. They were then too late to stop that, too late to start hiking interest rates. The Russia and Ukraine thing kicks off where they put sanctions on Russia and, you know, remove supply of a lot of commodities and, and, and you know, food and energy costs. You know, it's a situation that these places have put themselves in and, and it's a problem that continues to continues to prolong. Um, yeah, Bank of England tomorrow, let's see what they say, but um, I think they're somewhat powerless to really do much about it, if I'm being perfectly honest. Negative for UK assets, for sterling, for FTSE, not a good not a good day or two for them, um, for the UK economy, I must, uh, I must admit. Um, but into the intermarket monitor, sorry, we'll have a flick across this, same same story as this morning, equity futures lower, commodities lower, bonds lower, yields higher, um, classic, um, well, I'd say classic, I mean, yields, yields lower in terms of classic risk on risk off, but expectations for interest rates higher, um, you know, North American equity futures, European equity futures, it's kind of been the story of this week, you know, negative, negativity of markets, negative sentiment, albeit not a massive amount, but with China not increasing interest rates, how markets may have hoped, you've got expectations for a hawkish Fed. You've got markets probably seemingly waking up to the fact that last week was a bunch of hawkish central banks, apart from the Bank of Japan. But, you know, markets kind of disregarded that last week and maybe they've woken up a bit this week and be like, oh, 
maybe it's something we should pay attention to. But um, anyways, you've got Jerome Powell out this afternoon, which is he's likely to reiterate his, his hawkish stance, you would have to imagine. And that is the expected reaction to that. North America, well, equity futures lower or equities lower in general, bond yields higher. You likely see the dollar strengthen off the back of that. But a little bit mixed today. We'll have to see what happens to it after Jerome Powell's announcement in um, or his, his, his testimony in an hour and six minutes at this point. Uh, but Australian dollars lower across the board in line with stock indexes, Kiwi dollar pretty mixed, Canadian dollar strong across the board, you know, I, I, I say part against Japanese yen, but you know, CAD yen slightly down, a um, little bit little bit tricky on, on the grid when you swap the different currencies around, but we go CAD yen because that's the way it's quoted down slightly, so um, but Canadian dollar pretty strong against all the rest of the major currencies and sterling has turned lower and is pushing lower across the the board and um, the only thing it's up against is the Australian dollar which is the lowest currency of the day off the back of stock indexes uh, the minutes you have yesterday showing showing us potential for, for no more rate increases for, for China struggling a bit so there's multiple contributing factors to the Australian dollar certainly sterling is not having a good time of it over the course of today but into the calendar reason for CAD upside is probably due to this you can see as we come over here you can see retail sales month over month figure consensus 0 0.2 versus actual figure of 1.1 uh, excluding automobiles consensus 0 0.4 actual 1.3 um, new housing price index over the course of the month yeah the yearly figures down slightly from last year but I think the, the monthly figure is slightly more important consensus for zero previous 0 point minus 0 0.1 plus 0 0.1 over the course of the month of May. Now, with the Bank of Canada hiking interest rates unexpectedly a couple of weeks ago, with them opening the door, so after pausing, they had unexpectedly hike interest rates um, off the back of high inflation, high growth, strong economic data. This is more economic data that is strong. Now, after they hiked interest rates unexpectedly, they did open the door to potential for some more interest rate hikes. We then come to the data and the data is strong and that clearly explains reason for Canadian dollar upside going forward, which is good to see. For a lot of the last three years, this economic data has not reacted the way it should. Um, you know, you can see, for example, this morning across the UK, you get strong inflation figures. You know, standard economics would be strong inflation figures would mean hiking of interest rates, which would mean positive for the currency, negative for the stock index. But now we're seeing negative for the currency just because of the current situation that we are in. Now, a lot of the global global economies or economies across the globe, should I say, have been in that situation where, okay, data doesn't just mean a beat is positive and a miss is negative. You've got to actually read into the individual economies and how they are they are they are they are forming. But we've seen a bit of US data recently. Over the last kind of couple of, over the, well, maybe over this year, but certainly recently, um, central banks getting back to a more kind of stable monetary policy, not stable in terms of interest rates for all up five, five and a half, four and a half, five, five and a half percent, but you know, getting back to a stage where they are becoming a lot more data dependent. All the central banks they are going to judge interest rate hikes going forward or even cuts maybe back end of this year off the back of the incoming economic data and that's where we can begin to piece this stuff together again and then look to trade in line with that bias which i don't want to say makes trading easier but gives us more of a clear plan in order to give us some directions across these different currencies and assets where well, you can see us dollar and again this trend has kind of continued on on the australian dollar kiwi dollar still slightly lower you know dollar dollar swiss still pointed higher dollar cad pushing lower off the back of that positive data but now apart from cable you're not really got any massive moves today we, we're looking at that candlestick earlier you can see that green one there and we've just aggressively pushed off those highs um of 128 back down to 127 so a good 100 pip move um in a couple of hours and three hours off 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 cable and that is obviously expected due to the due to the situation that we were alerting to alluding to earlier on this morning. Bit unexpectedly, sterling had a bit of a rise, probably off the back of of, of cable selling off, uh, but now it's turned back lower as that inflation print. Whatever it means for the currency, you can think for yourself, but certainly for the stock index, there's no way that that is positive. Um, you know, the, the, it's you know the, it's gonna the causes a you know decrease in business conditions. Going forward, whatever way you go at it, go at it from from consumer spending dropping to central bank raising interest rates, it's not a good thing for the stock index itself. It's no surprise that that has turned around and pushed back lower. You've got attempts from the S and P, the Dow Jones, trying to get through these lows. We had a break below this head and shoulders on the Russell yesterday that failed, and we're now back testing this neckline again. We can see some downside across the DAX, the FTSE, the Nikkei, somewhat unexpectedly rising higher, but mainly we're going to be focusing on these as we head into the U.S. session today. 
and that is likely I, I wouldn't go selling any of these breaks now until Jerome Powell gives us his thoughts um yields on government two year on, on on UK government bonds two year bonds have, have pushed higher which we were looking for this morning and had a dip black lower and then pushed back higher so I think this level of 5.1 percent is under a uh, under probably under pressure that is uh, mainly based off of or it's a better indication of short-term interest rates a two-year yield, 10-year yield is a better indication of how the economy is likely to fare going forward. So I think those two years, keep that, keep an eye on that. That breaks up up above 5.1% uh, over the course of today and tomorrow off the back of the Bank of England. It's probably likely to prove further negative for cable, further negative for the FTSE. Uh, something we can look at for some clear direction. But apart from that, not a massive amount really to go off. Got Jerome Powell, 3 o'clock today. Let's see what he has to say about monetary policy in the US.